Good morning, my name is Firas and today I'm going to continue with you in the second lecture in Autodesk 3D Studio Max Elementary course. In Unit 1, which is an introduction an introduction course for 3D Studio Max, uh, today we're going to finish with uh, lecture 2 and specifically getting started with uh, the use of 3D Studio Max. In this lecture we're going to talk about how we as a designer are going to use the 3D Studio Max. Uh, another topic which is the 3D Studio Max crashing, 3D Studio Max saving and save as concept, understanding the user interface, viewports, and then units. And in uh, getting started, it's, uh, it's actually the second lecture in this elementary course, as I said, and it's also most of it uh, can be considered as a theoretical part of. Uh, understanding 3d studio max so we're gonna have a little bit of uh, practical or hands-on uh, 3d studio max but uh, let's see what we can have in this lecture so the first topic here is how we can use as a designer uh, 3d studio max there's a different ways and in, uh, in the use of the 3d studio max and how we can deal with it how we can process uh, the entire design work and, and, and the first method is actually is to do a, a direct 3D modeling or 3D sketching inside 3D Studio Max and that's really what we talked also before in the first lecture also the introduction is not to just depend on Max as a visualization tool and yes it can make a very nice uh, sketches and it also can start up your works directly in 3D and put the idea in it better than uh, just to start on a piece of paper. You can of course start on a piece of paper and then change it into 3D Max or you can start in AutoCAD and then come here into Max and make work but yes you can start immediately with 3D Studio Max and save significant amount of time and the um, amount of time actually required to change these 3D forms are actually less than any other method. It's very similar to use the SketchUp or uh, Rhino or any other software that you can start up your own concept of designing it and um, if, if I go now to Max for example I can make any type of form quickly uh, just based on 3D Max rather than I build that form form so I don't have a specific I don't maybe, maybe even think of any units in here I just pop up here and have a box and and just to start to add the masses and see how they fit to each other and uh, keep navigating uh, around my building see this type of composition that I'm at I can just add another box here and see if it's uh, if it's need to be repeating repeating here uh, try to understand the relationship you create and how you create them where you need those boxes for example to be copies it's a complete design uh, uh, work it, it doesn't you don't need actually to think of maybe dimension or any any other thing you just need to think of how to make a beautiful composition and that's basically a good a good start for any architect rather than trying to draw that on a piece of paper and give your professor or your client to give just give him a dumb top views uh, it's uh, it, it's really uh, it's really a good idea to understand that it's not only the ability to work on a, on a wireframe or just on a 2d paper for a composition now you can have your everything you want you can have from the beginning a, a quick start for uh, an elevations or for perspective or for 3d work and uh, just enjoy adding boxes spheres any type of geometries that's already been pre-made here try to create your own concept straightforward in 3D Studio Max rather than just to bring it as a 2D line from AutoCAD and then extrude it all or just depending on Max as a visualization tool so this point is just aiming to tell you that you must try to sketch in 3D Studio Max and you're gonna get uh, lots of uh, lots of nice results and uh, and what you've got and lots of other forms can be generated as you can see it's really nice to uh, to try sketch and maybe for me I try to use here a shading that's a, uh, a mud shade and so I don't get distracted by any type of uh, material uh, issue I just look all of them as a one material and then see how the form and think of the concept only and then just go and uh, uh, continue the work of material and lights 
anyway so that's for the first point is yes yes i i can use 3d max for a 3d sketching or 3d model direct 3d modeling actually and make anything make a building make a, a piece of table lamp i don't know you can adjust design whatever you want in a three dimension the other way you can use the 3d studio max is to create a 2d profiles and from that 2d profiles you're gonna start creating your own 3d geometry so you can make this for example just a profile here and then make a revolve or a uh, or a lathe it depends on the, the software here you work on to create this shape or for example you create this just a cross section of this bridge and then you create the bridge itself and so on and so on so you can make an elaborated and detailed 2d framework inside 3d studio max and then you go and jump and change that into 3d I know some people might ask why don't you do the entire plans in 3D Studio Max. I would say that will never be a good idea. You can make uh, maybe a highly complicated physical geometries like this made of a couple of cross sections and then change that into 3D but I don't know for myself maybe I'm talking about myself making in, uh, making the entire plans in Max will not be a good idea but if you are making like a piece of table lamp an airplane uh, a single geometry i think like this or like that yes you can do very detailed exact 2d profile work in max and then change that into a 3d model but uh, for a plan or for an architectural detailed plan i would go you have to work with the 3d method for example which is you can import autocad 2d work and then extrude that work into a 3d geometry whether would have a, a covered cap or it's look like a 3d or just like an open cap and it's look like just an open fence anyway you're going to end up by having uh, by having an extruded plan which allow you to create spaces and doors and gates and all that details that you require easily uh, as a 3d form inside 3d studio max and you brought that detailed basics lines out of uh, AutoCAD and we're gonna spend most of the course doing this job as an architectural visualization course and we're gonna bring plans and we're gonna change them into 3D Max and all that stuff and uh, it's kind of detailed because you can uh, technically bring all the accuracy of AutoCAD plans and uh, you can get benefit of the 3D an easy way of making 3D geometries inside 3D Max and how to amend them also quickly. The fourth method of uh, of using 3D Studio Max or how you can get benefit of 3D Studio Max is to de depend on AutoCAD 3D geometries, which is basically you do the 2D work and the 3D work in AutoCAD, and then you send that work to 3D Studio Max just to add materials and lights and make the good quality rendering. Uh, for me, I, I just saw a couple of people depending on this and for me, I I don't want or I, I will never work on that. It's uh, I'm not really a big fan with AutoCAD 3D work. So, uh, but uh, despite my point of view, it's, it's existed method and you can create actually a good results if you if you enhance an, a sufficient 3D uh, AutoCAD work, uh, sorry, skills. Another method of getting things or dealing with 3D Studio Max to create 3D entities is to depend on a 3D scanners. And 3D scanners are a group of hardwares that you can find uh, with a different specification and a different prices, of course, uh, on any, any on in the market. And just just you put on pop up your geometry, whether it is small or big, it depends on, on the technology and the price you have for your device. And it's immediately digitized that. Um, create a 3d copy for you inside 3d studio max it's a lovely way if you are working with an animation or a piece of historical architectural model like this it's gonna be a really painful process to try to model that uh, from scratch inside uh, 3d studio max and if it's have it it's on deficiencies if it's archaeological part and you want to model even this uh, broken pieces uh, of it it's gonna be a uh, way much more harder so in this case it would goes for uh, a 3d scanner it's better method to deal with that so that's the method that's available or that's some of the techniques that you can do with so you can just again sketch directly in max uh, that's the first as a 3d or create simple 
uh, sorry, create detailed 2D profiles, but not the entire architectural plan in Max, uh, which I don't recommend. It's not impossible, but I don't recommend. And then change those 2D Max shape into 3D Max shapes. Or you can just go ahead and bring AutoCAD 2D shapes and create 3D models. Or bring the entire 3D from AutoCAD and just add material and lights in Max. Or finally, use a 3D scanners to bring the geometry straight forward into a 3D to Max without modeling it. Now, into the second point or the second topic in our lecture that uh, 3D Studio Max may crash. And I have, I must actually change this main to will crash. And that's a fact you will, you will see in 3D Studio Max, it's crash. I tried, uh, no matter how much uh, you spend on your machine or how careful you go with dealing with the parameter of 3D Studio Max, you're going to end up one time one point at one point crashing and ending uh, to see yourself working on the desktop instead of 3D Studio Max for no logical reason so we gonna you have to understand that and you have to understand why that happened and that's if we can of course there's lots of reasons we don't know yet and uh, it's also to know how to deal with it and yes it's um, it's, it's different and the software from AutoCAD and different software from Max and Revit and in AutoCAD also AutoCAD crash but significantly less if we compare it to 3D Studio Max Revit also crash AutoCAD Revit but Revit again in, based on my personal experience and again it's my point of view Max uh, crashes more than Revit Revit seems to me to be much more stabilized software if we compare it to 3D Studio Max so uh, let's have a look what are the reasons behind that some of the actual reason is the use or the first ones they use the computer that have a low specification if your computer doesn't have enough RAM or does not have uh, the, 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 the machine power that it needs a processor hard disk I don't know all of them sometimes so cheap laptops or cheap desktops might create a really painful experience for you working on 3d studio max if you just you want to use it as a beginner or just for a learning process as long as it's running mass might go might goes okay but whenever you go to create an entire project uh, I, I highly don't advise you to go with this experience the second uh, reason that the user himself or herself may cause max to crash and that can goes for a bad using for segments uh, using the wrong type of modifiers or overuse the type of modifiers uh, lots of things actually caused by the user himself more than the software or the hardware so the software actually can cause that the hardware and the user which is the second point so uh, the user actually can or will cause this third point to be specific which is bad using of modifiers so lots of modifiers will cause max to crash and uh, that will consume the resources of your machine and cause max to crash on you uh, same thing which is the, the fourth point which is the use of unnecessary segments and again the the user are the one behind that and better than just uh, speak about it we can just go and uh, and uh, <clears throat> just go and try to see that how it, how it's been done and in, in a 3d studio max so uh, you can make two boxes for example and those two boxes are almost identical and looking the same uh, you can even can copy them from from each one other here so they are exactly the same size and look if if you select this one and you go to the modifier it's made of six faces and if you go and uh, try to get a rendered result out of that they look the same exactly when you do the, the rendering thing so some some user actually just go here in the segment and try to increase that and the segment which is a little bit of piece of lines that divided any axis which is in the length and the width and the height any parameter you have and you create this segment which makes this box 
more detailed and actually it's allowed it to work more with modifiers so i understand that and i understand why autodesk i fully understand why autodesk added but for you as a new beginner i just you just wanted to make uh, a box like this so and probably you didn't turn on f4 which is showing you the the uh, sorry f3 or 4 uh, i lost it uh you didn't show the the edges on uh, your uh, in, in your on your object so like this uh, so it's uh, again f4 sorry for my bad so you have the boxes like this f4 will allow you to see the edges again which is this see so if you didn't turn on f4 technically you're not seeing how many subjects here so if 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 you finish this and you keep adding 5 here and then 10 here and you really understand that you are seeing it's creating or sometimes you don't even see what you're changing that's an issue some people just don't get enough with 5 or 6 segments they want to just see to what would happen if I add a hundred segment and then got another hundred segment and then another hundred segment and, and you're gonna see that eventually when they deselect they even forgot that they did a hundred by a hundred and a hundred so a hundred multiplied by a hundred multiplied by a hundred it looked like you have a million face here and a million face to create one object while this guy has been made of six and guess what if you go again and render this two cubes the resulted image is just two boxes and that is really bad because you're making here this guy is heavier than this one by almost a million times and you end up with having the same reason and yes because we are architect we do a lots of columns so you're gonna copy that guy like this and a couple of I don't know a hundred times 20 I don't know 50 and you then you keep copying it again each time you want to make a row of columns and this will damage your your machine and will cause the file to be bigger and bigger which will consume the size of RAM and other specification and make it harder for your laptop to deal with and end up by having a crash so I'm not gonna do that because this is my old laptop as I always say so uh, if I did it it's immediately gonna uh, you know die and you know I have to restart the whole thing even now you can see for three or four boxes you see it's getting a little bit slower so imagine when you copy this for a hundred time or depend on this box for your entire building a million face box rather than a six faces only so be careful of this point is the bad use of segments if you don't know what you're doing don't jump in here and try to change too much stuff especially segments or add too much segments try to add that carefully and in the other point that I talked about is the use of too much modifier so using too much noise or too much other modifiers also can cause uh, lots of uh, issues actually and it, it's allow you actually the modifiers to create a complicated geometry but yes it's uh, it's also it's uh, consume the resources so this type of modifiers for example is distort the geometry and make it look like uh, like a charcoal or uh, like a C or, or whatever so if I turn F4 here it's look like a, a water and if, yes it's anim animatable so you can just uh, change the phase here and yeah so sad bad laptop anyway and, 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 and if you have uh, let's go for F3 here maybe it's gonna be sorry my bad should have done the animation button first see so it's, it's even give you it's even give you the ability to simulate uh, the movement of uh, water if you want but anyway using too much modifiers in the geometry will cause max to go slower and slower and then you push it to crash and that again can be get back to the second point which is it's just a bad user so too much segments that's a point again too much modifiers that's a second point and both of them are actually the fault of 
a bad user or unexperienced user let's just say that some of this is might be obvious for example bad using or bad modifying uh, for example if I need to change this box and we're going to talk about that into uh, an edit mesh now it's a parametric uh, box or primitive modeling and uh, if I just need to add a modifier here and just again well, let me copy it first so just a box again so this guy I need to deal with edit mesh or mesh modeling again for example and I edit this one or add this one add for it edit mesh this is a modifier so I can now deal with meshing so that phase I can divide it and extrude it I can do whatever I want anyway again I can just select that guy and hit right click and convert to edit mesh or editable mesh so technically this guy is mesh and this guy is also a mesh now it's not a, not a normal box that I've created we're gonna talk about the different types of uh, modeling later on but imagine this is a modifier that allow you to work with meshes while this one you change it into a mesh this box exactly look like the same one but this is specifically six times heavier than this one and the machine so the size of the file should be later on when you accumulate a significant amount of number this file with this one will be a heavier file on your RAM rather six times usually rather than the use of normal boxes in it so be careful again it might look be innocent mistake but again it can, can cause uh, lots of damage later on anyway back to our PowerPoint the fourth point is the unnecessary usage of high segments we, we, we spoke about that the fifth which is the last one is the rendering process and the rendering process itself it might be uh, uh, intimidating the process it have lots of other parameters and it can cause the RAM to be significantly consumed or filled which will end up by again crashing so it's normally a, an, an annoying process for lots of people and sometimes bad settings that you can use or high settings that you can use in, in, in the process of rendering it will cause also max to crash and we're going to talk about what's rendering and how we deal with it in the in later uh, lectures therefore it would be a highly critical decision to know when and how to save your work so you must understand from that all that an introduction telling you that max will crash not may will crash and you need to know when and how to save it might be lots of other methods you can tell me that it's already have an auto backup you can go and change the auto backup setting and again I'm gonna repeat that yes I know there is an auto backup settings but I highly encourage you to use this method and not to depend only on the auto backup usually I will ask you to save each five minute logically and I have this habit and to keep it with you while working on AutoCAD or working in 3D Studio Max that's okay saving is good but do you know if you keep saving on the same place same time for a long time you might get another big chance that this file you are saving on will be corrupted also or for any reason if you made any mistake this file by this file or working in this file and then you over you over the you over you over put material in that file that it could be not be able to be opened again in the same software because you saved an information you open the file with the ability of like say your, your machine 4 gigabyte and then you keep adding things 3d geometry complicated 3d geometry and now you save it and it's saved perfectly just by using control s the size of the file after you add a heaps of material heavy material it could be now more than 4 gigabyte which is your ram and yes you're gonna tell me it shouldn't be it shouldn't be it shouldn't be goes okay no it could goes okay because your your machine will open a page up file on your hard disk and can save even more than that but when you try to when you save it it goes okay but when you try to open it again it's not enough for a four gigabyte and it's gonna send you a, a corruption file and it's out of memory messages and yes it's a kind of, it kind of make a big headache for you so it's a good idea not to only save okay save it five minutes but you have to go 
and uh, it depends on creating a sequence of a continuous saving which is based on a save as so five minutes save and then each 15 minutes just come and save as a new name so name it your name or project one and then after 15 minutes keep saving on this one by control s five four times i don't know and after half an hour 20 minutes go and make another save as and name it for example project 002 and then 003 you choose 10 15 20 minutes i don't know it's, it's a good idea a good habit to do that and by the end of results you're gonna have like 0102 that's the file 030405 and so on to up to 10 for me i will go and change the name of that to say that's a prelim that's a pre-final and final i will keep those please don't try to tell me that you're gonna consume my hard disk yes i know but it's a serious process important process to be done in my point of view that's how i work that's how i protect myself for for, for lots of reason to be crashed on and when i finish submit my work to the client i take my money or if you are a student now you submit the client for your professor get your grade get happy or sad it depends on you but again i will come back and delete this one these two things and those three things and keep those with the important prelim pre-final and final just for me to archive yes i will get rid of this small ones or not important one or the step-by-step -step work on and i keep the keystone one and that's a good way for me to archive too that's in my point of view is a good method to save to know when to save and when to know to do the save as uh, not in my point of view to depend on the backup system i highly encourage you to do this especially in the exams because if it's a crash at the end and the backup doesn't work you're going to be really in a bad condition uh, trying to prove that you actually did the work while if you are saving and save as and you reach nine and by the end of the time your file or work crash you can open eight and you can show it to the professor as you have the work of eight steps and you can tell by himself that you're doing the job you wasn't just that don't know what to do you know anyway that's for me for uh, for an idea of how to save and save as and here the fourth point I'm trying to tell you about the user interface or the UI. User interface in 3D Studio Max is, uh, it can be a little bit of uh, intimidating in the beginning. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very easy and very simple. It's following the, the majority of lots of other software. It's, it's 3D software. It's basically have uh, four viewports and which is those four viewports and it's uh, just a small piece of window that allow you to see or look into the 3d work so all of those four is looking to the same point which is this the the original point which is the intersection of uh, the x and y so if i created a box here and i'm gonna look to this box from a perspective shaded one those are still wire framing so but again that's a top of view that's a left of view and that's a front of view you can just notice that Max have only one active view, which is the one that have this this uh, brownish or yellowish frame. It depends on what type of uh, 3D Studio Max version you have, and you can hit Alt and W on it, or while it's active, to make it bigger, or just to get it back to its size. It's similar to press this one, this button here, minimize and maximize, and you get it get this bigger. If you want to make the top of view big, just click here and just hit Alt and W, and you're gonna make it big. Here, I can come to the top of you here and the wireframe. I just write that and just change it to shaded so I can see it colored like this. So again, I come here, click. So see, you notice the first click, like here. First click, I made it active, and then the second click on the name of the wireframe and just make it shaded to make to make it actually not look through the system. That's a realistic. See the wireframe. See, you can look through it. You can go uh, claim the uh, one I told you about in the beginning. I love it because everything you create now will have no shades. All of them will be the same. I love that. It prevents my brain from distracting by this too much colors. But anyway, it's a method of work. Uh, any one of those, then to the front, you can change it and you can even make it a different one. You can make it top. You can make it, I don't know, depending on what you want, right? 
or you, you can even make it a 3d view just by hitting this arc rotation here and change that into a 3d view and when I hit this 3d button here which allow me to again to arc rotate you can just click and then you hit this one and it's allow you to rotate exactly around the selected object rather than the entire scene notice that when I change the uh, a top view or a, a side view into a 3d by use this command which is the orbit it didn't change into a perspective it changed into an orthographic which is a perspective it's not a perspective work it's a fully parallel uh, orthographic uh, uh, viewport and it uh, doesn't have a vanishing point so not like this one it's more realistic and it's uh, you can use that for uh, an engineering drawing uh, rather this is more like uh, uh, architecture or artistic way of having a vanishing point for this line and this line it's, it's a more realistic way much more realistic anyway so I can just uh, hit here and just hit in the keyboard by the way P and it's gonna change into perspective and then I can change this into uh, sorry from here into realistic or shaded to get it uh, look like different and look again we're looking at the same composition of this one box and three balls and and again this is have a realistic so I can see the actual shaded or material that it has while this one it's just saying clay that's all, all of them will look like reddish clay so no colors again so yes you can use uh, letters to uh, change this rather than using this one like I, I don't know top, T for top of view, L for left, P for perspective, C for camera or something like that while this one you can come here and change this into a wireframe or wireframe with edges and some of the hotkeys which is here I think uh, Alt and F3 jump to wireframe C and Alt uh, sorry not Alt3 it's just uh, F3 F3 yes for changing to wireframe and I think F4 to show to allow the edges faces and you see these edges here as you can see so if I hit F4 now again it's gonna be disappeared while F3 gonna change it into a wireframe mode anyway so again that's the uh, view cube and it's almost now in all the 3D softwares of Autodesk and it's very similar to the uh, to using this one except it gives you more option that for example you can just rotate around if you hit this ring if you stop on that click and drag it gonna allow you to do horizontal and uh, vertical rotation you can just go click on the corner lovely to get this 45 uh, uh, view of a perspective of almost exactly a 45 degree looking to the corner from that corner or from that corner I don't know you can make a top of you in the perspective you can return to a full perspective like this or you can just go rotating around that lovely isn't it okay so it's combined lots of tools in here which is this one made of this one again anyway the other tools that we might need to know is this which is zoom extend so it allows us to see everything we created in the scene so if I zoom in like that and I want to know how big my scene is just click here once and you can have uh, the, the, the current active viewport set to see that geometry to see the entire geometry is actually sorry in this viewport which is this this one is again doing, doing the same thing but for the entire viewport and be careful that's the small triangular thing here that's uh, to allow you to extend for the selected or for the entire geometry so if we hit this one see it's gonna make the selected geometry as big as the entire screen even in a single screen or in all other screens while if you select this whitish one it's gonna make the entire geometries the entire scene you model as big as the entire all of those screen like this so it allow you to see all your work not the selected one as big in the entire screens of here of max or just the current active one which is you can activate by again as we say we click in anyway you want you can just change the location of that make them bigger make them smaller you just can pop up here and choose if you want uh, two verticals or you can just 
shoot this one, the old Max was having this one, lovely one. And when you just you click on one of those, uh, uh, Max will remember your setting. So it's gonna save it for you here. You don't need to double click and select. Just get back to this fourth system, and that's it. And again, you can amend it back and get it as it was before. That's for the viewport. A quick help with the viewport. This is the the in this panel is that it have all the creation modification panel so that's the panel here on the side and and as the names goes here to the top that's a creation one so you can create a new stuff in here you can modify the existing stuff by selecting them you can change their own parameter if they are parametric making them big or small or you can just go here and just uh, i don't know add a modifiers that can change their own uh, property and make them different based on the modifier you picked and so on and so on so be careful when you click here those tools will change this is a creation this is a modification that's a hierarchy and so on and whatever you're going to click you're going to find a different command that related to what you selected so you know if he doesn't select anything you're going to have different results see here no modification but when you select you're going to have the modification tools of what you selected it's very similar to the Especially the modify to the property panel in AutoCAD, but anyway, in a different uh, in a different way to work with. Anyway, that's the the panel. This one is ribbon, and it's look like uh, you have all the tools here. Uh, that's a, a tool a toolbar here. You can have lots of tools and lots of commands, and in it, so each tool also stores lots of commands here so you can get the array or the align or the mirror from here or you can just get them again from the, the top button the top sides of this toolbar that's a layer so it's very similar to AutoCAD you can create new layers here and uh, deal with those layers later on to organize your work you can turn them on you can turn them off are now same as AutoCAD we're gonna, again we're going to talk about that in a more detail later on uh, again you can save here in this quick bar here you can undo redo open or create a new file and define the way that we look to the workspace the lower part of it this is used for max script if you all have any idea of how to script based on text how you change the criteria you build a new functions you can do that here you can make that bigger or smaller the lower bar here it's it's like a, an information bar you can select this it can tell you you selected one object if you hit control and select the other one it's gonna tell you two objects and so on and so on with shift to get rid anyway uh, this one also it can show you the coordination of the object that's the lock you can lock the selection of it again those settings for animation so if you want to do any, any type of animation you can come to those and those for play the animation the rest which is what we start up with it to control usually the viewport that's again we say minimize and maximize that for orbiting those for zoom extent that's a window so you can zoom in and zoom out and it's very similar to pushing the scroll of your mouse in or out and this one is the same process but for the entire four views at the same time that's a that's a walkthrough it's good and if you know how to use the a D W S in the in the in the keyboard just like for games you can just go inside and uh, you know uh, without the W I'll make this big and I can use this just to walk uh, I can just move my my hand in the mouse just like it's not like you're looking and then you just uh, move uh, uh, between those objects it's, it's as as if you have a game actually a move between them it's just a nice uh, function then you rotate your head and see that you are going away from your objects that's a nice thing anyway uh, here it's a zoom uh, field of zoom, field of view it's look like very much to zooming but it's not it's actually changing the the field of view and make it bigger which can cause a significant distortion to the to the to the perspective so be careful when you know <clears throat> so be careful how to use it and uh, it's really useful tool for example if you want to make uh, the ability or you want to increase the ability of the viewport of the camera you can use how much you see actually out of this scene the final thing that i want to finish my introduction or getting started part of my introduction 
is the unit so I go to customize here and unit setup and it's very important to understand that and it's very important to understand how to deal with it but before I'll just hit that and I'll go usually metric so it depends on what type of work you have if it's metric or millimeters I prefer only working on metric anyway so if I pick here meter I have to come back here to system unit setup again open it and make sure that this one unit equal to one meter so again meter sorry metric and then meter or millimeter let's go millimeter for example and then system unit setup put that aside this one millimeter again and then you hit OK and then you hit OK before you actually do anything so if I go back to my PowerPoint and uh, <clears throat> sorry if I get back to PowerPoint now the question is how we decide that and is it is it depend on what as as architects for example if you have nothing you just a sketching and you know what type of sketch you want to do you can just create it as a metric and you go create like a box with the 10 by 10 or cylinder 50 meter radius but if you are bringing work from AutoCAD in this case you must open AutoCAD and hit units UNITS and then space and then see what type of units you used in drawing your plan and then you import those plans inside 3D Studio Max and then go to customize unit setup and inside max use the same units you used in AutoCAD to get accurate results and to save the time for the headache you're gonna have later on if you don't do that so follow your AutoCAD units if you are importing AutoCAD 2D works into 3D max if you don't have any specific need for units you're just messing around just ignore that you can just put the generic units if you know or you are sketching a 3D model inside Max straight, you not depending on AutoCAD, just go ahead and pick meter, for example, for me as an architect, as a bigger unit, and I go, okay, and then play around with the boxes, 10 by 10, I know the exact dimension of them, so you can get benefit of the actual approximation of the final dimension of your masses you add into 3D CD Max. Anyway, I wish that this lecture uh, was useful for you. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any question, please pop that question in my YouTube channel. I'm happy to answer you. Thank you very much and have a